your heart, the May Wine Growing Area in Northern Spain. There's a family with its four generations dedicated to wine since 1950. Today's journey of wine will take you to your heart to feel the passion of the Vivanco family. Welcome to Rioja in Spain and welcome to Dinastia Vivanco. Dinastia Vivanco is a, a museum, museum of wine culture, a foundation for spreading, in, in researching and spreading wine culture and a winery which makes fine Rioja wines. The museum as we see is behind me, it's spread across five floors. The museum is founded under the vision of Pedro Vivanco, that is, to give back to wine what wine has given to us. On its inauguration in June 2004, His Majesty Juan Carlos I signed his name on one of Dinastia Vivanco's cast to recognize family's efforts in developing wine culture. On the first floor, this is about um, being born, aging, and maturing, and actually takes us back to the origins of wine, uh, and and shows us how the grape was exported to different cultures and how wine was made from the very beginnings, with objects from from each of the ages described. A rich ethnographic and technical collection about vines and wine, which explains the growing process of wine throughout the four seasons of the year and the production of the new wine. One can see how the system of traditional wine cultivation and tools used, pruning equipment, plows, wine cutters, etc., have continued without modification for millennia. second floor is about preserving the essences and it explains all the different uh, recipients that wine has and does use today in order for it to to be transported in and to be to be aged and later to be to be consumed this space offers a step-by-step -step explanation of how to make a cast from the initial selection, shaping, and the transformation of the wood to the final construction of the finished cask. It also takes a closer look at bottle making and explains how craft techniques were gradually replaced by industrial production. have a display of bottles and the materials used in, in transporting and holding the wine from way back, as, as far as way back as 50 BC and the evolution through time uh, with different, different manufacturing processes described. Uh, incidentally, this bottle has been used as an inspiration for the bottle we use in Dynastia Vivanco wines. It's a bottle from France from around 1840. And it actually uh, marked the end of the craftsmanship approach to bottle making. Now we're on the third floor, the third room, and this room is dedicated to uh, the wine cellar and the age-old chores and jobs which must be carried in and around uh, the production of wine. Not everything in a cellar is restful. Silence disappears with the racking, finding and filtering of the wine. Pumps, filters, speakers, similar to those on display at the museum, are designed to help the winemakers carry out these tasks. With the wine duly prepared, the moment for its release from sale and transport arrives. Every wine skin has an opinion related to major modes of transport, shipping and railway. In the front in this part of the 
now we're on the fourth floor. Uh, this space is dedicated to art, mythology and symbolism that has accompanied wine through, uh, throughout the ages from the beginning of time. As a whole, this room provides us with information about the symbolic value grape vines and wine have had for mankind, particularly in Mediterranean cultures. The paintings and carvings included in this section are work of Spanish, Flemish, Italian, and French artists, ranging from the Renaissance artist Jan van Squaram to Pablo Picasso. What we have here is a, a little cinema which talks about the seventh art and its uh, link with wine. If you would like, you can come in and take a seat and watch some films. Uh, the fifth floor of the museum is dedicated to opening, serving, and drinking the wine. The moment has come for you to enjoy the wine. But how would you open a bottle without the help of a corkscrew? Here is a display of one of the largest collections of corkscrews in the world, with over 3,000 different models illustrating the evolution and diversity of this simple instrument. There is a sixth floor of the museum, that is, the Baker's Garden. A stroll there allows you to see 250 different varieties of farming from all around the world. All perfectly catalogued and identified, so that any lover of the culture of wine will be able to study and appreciate the enormous diversity of farms that exists. We have uh, seven wines. We see we have a young wine range, which is a rosé and a white wine that's unaged, fresh, made in the same year. We have a more traditional Spanish wine range, which is Crianza and Reserva. I say more traditional, but actually our approach to winemaking would be probably uh, more modern, uh, which is probably described as fruit-driven. Um, often Rioja was very well known for having a very large presence of oak in the wines. Rafael strives to achieve a lovely balance between oak and fruit, letting the fruit uh, come forward as often as possible. So this would be the Crianza and the Reserva. Um, Crianza has 16 months in, in French and American oak and Reserva has 22 months in French and American oak. Crianza is Tempranillo and Reserva is 90% Tempranillo grape, 10% Garnacha. Then we come to the, the high range, high end range of the winery, which is Colección Vivanco. Colección Vivanco is uh, Rafael's latest wine project and it centers in uh, two monovarietal uh, wines, which is Garnacha and Graciano, from two very specific. Uh, terroirs. Both of these grapes are forgotten or minor minority grapes in Rioja and Rafael has decided to give them protagonist protagonism and use them uh, in a single variety wine. So here we have Colección Vivanco four varietals which, uh, as we can see, has a gold medal here from the Bacchus. Uh, it's Spain's biggest international wine competition, and this won the gold medal. Just received 90 Parker points as well. Um, and I'm about to taste this. Um, as we can see, 
lovely uh, dark red, almost purpley black liquid. We give it a twirl to release the aromas. In the nose, we get powerful and complex aromas of red and black fruit, floral notes, and we get some hints of coffee and tobacco. Magnificent. Taste is fresh, intense, very expressive. Soft tannins, just give a lovely mouth mouth feel, lovely texture on the mouth. With very, very long and expressive bright fruit finish. The wine has a finish. The loved wine, however, has not. The Nasnia Vivanco is now progressing vigorously and gratefully towards its centennial.